Hey, I want to spend some time with you talking about an inequality that uh, gets used a lot in, in math competitions, uh, math Olympiads, the Singapore math Olympiad. Uh, it, it's just really a very powerful inequality. And I'm going to work a very special case of it. it. It helped me to understand it a little bit better. Some of the notation had bothered me, so I never really used it. I knew, I knew about it, but I didn't really know how to use it. Now, uh, the first thing I want to, I guess, maybe the most important thing here is this idea of a majorizing sequence. Now, <clears throat> right here in this context, notice here there's a connection here, two, zero, two, zero, and then we have two, zero here, two, zero here, one, one here, and one, one here. Uh, so for this inequality summation to work, you have to have what they, you have to have what they call a majorizing sequence. All right, now in this context right here, uh, your two would be behaving like, uh, x sub one and the zero would be y sub one. And you can reference the mirror head statement just above there. Uh, and then right here we have x sub two, uh, y sub two, okay. Okay, now, and also this crazy looking uh, greater than sign, they, they intentionally, it's not the same as a greater than sign, but it has some kind of connection to the notion of greater than. Now, so if, if you take a look carefully, the, the sum, you know, two plus zero is equal to two and one plus one is equal to two. So this very first condition up here holds, right? That, that's an that's a absolute necessity, otherwise this doesn't make any sense. Uh, the rearrangement wouldn't work. But this next one's a little harder to read, but once you see what they're getting at, this makes quite a bit of sense. And let, let me just write down the case for K equals two. Notice that this is indexed by K. The last term is K here, Y sub K and X sub K. And this says k equals one, two, all the way to n sub one. And so for the case k equals two, for the case k equals two, this set of, uh, this inequality would correspond to this. We'd be adding two plus one. See, we're adding the two x coordinates. The two x sub i, shall I call them? Okay, so x sub one, x sub two, that's two plus one. And that's definitely greater than, I'll write greater than or equal to, but it's greater than or equal to zero plus one, right? Where we add the y coordinates together, all right? So first condition is met. Now for uh, now we have to do it for k equals one, right? Now k equals one is just gonna crap out to a single addition. We're gonna have uh, two is greater than or equal to one, right? So, even though these two things sum up to the same value, because of this condition right here, th this sequence of numbers is said to majorize the sequence of numbers. And that's important because if you just read the statement of this theorem, if you have a bunch of positive real values, and then you have these sequences, which actually correspond to the exponents, if you notice here, folks. And it's not as hard once you see a con when you first look at this, you go, my God, you know, but it, it, once you see a concrete case, you can see why it works. All right. So uh, everything's good. This is a majorizing sequence. Now, notice in, that, in the context we have right here, X is behaving like A sub 1. All these letters kind of get in the way, don't they? But again, working this one concrete example, I think you're going to like this thing. So uh, X is equal to A sub 1. All right. And Y would be equal to... Uh, a sub two. Y'all, that's sorry, that's a one, that's a sub one. And then y will be a sub two. Okay, that's a sub one, a sub two, right? And that's exactly the roles that are going on right here. I just stuck with these conventional letters because I didn't want to try to have subscripts and exponents going on at the same time. Okay, now the next question is, so we got that all ironed out, but what does this SYM mean? That used to bother me, but what it really means is the number of permutations that the variables can take on. Okay, so I would prefer to see permutation right there, P-E-R-M. Okay, permutation. Uh, they use symmetric. Uh, there's connections between symmetry and permutations, we know, but anyway, that's just kind of an embedded convention. So anyway, we have to, the summation means as you vary through, you keep the exponents the same, but you go through all the permutations of the symbol X, Y. So the only other permutation would be Y, X, right? There's if you have two objects, there's two, two factorial or, or two permutations, right? And so that's what's gonna happen on the very next page. So 
let's let's do that. Let's let's get to the next page here. All right, now folks, now here we go. This is what what we had a moment ago. Now here's exactly what we mean. Notice how we leave the two and the zero exactly where they are, but we permute. Here we have x y, and then we have y x. Now that seems silly because they're the, you know, but that's just the, the structure of this thing. Okay. Now a lot of people will leave out the y sub zero, but I think it's important because I've seen people just write down x squared y plus y squared, and you're supposed to know what they're talking about. Well, you are ranging through the two permutations, right? One, two permutations. Y to the zero is one, X to the zero is one, so you get X squared plus Y squared. In a similar fashion, you range, you know, with your one, one combination because of the majorizing, uh, you get this, right? But that's just equal to two X, Y. And notice it's two permutations. Had we been dealing with three variables, we would have six sum ends here. Three times two times one, three factorial, we would have six sum ends right here, okay? But notice what we get right here, Muirhead's inequality says, because two zero majorizes one one, this guy is gonna be greater than or equal to this guy, which is what I wrote down, right? We have X squared plus Y squared greater than two X Y. All right, so there you go. That uh, It's a lot of work, but now you see that it holds for a well-known case. This is just the arithmetic mean. And if you guys haven't dealt with that much, I'll show you why that's true real quick. Um, uh, this is the, uh, an application of the arithmetic mean geometric mean result. And uh, you can see how these two results overlap. Uh, the arithmetic mean geometric mean says this. For any two non-negative values, you can take their arithmetic mean or their average. Okay. And that's always greater than or equal to the square root of the product of the two variables. So that's uh, x squared, y squared, right? Now, just for granted, I'll go ahead and put a two there. Normally the two gets left out, but if you had three variables, you would have a three here and you would have a, you'd be taking the cube root. The two always gets left out on the square root and it does lead to some confusion. But notice that this is equal to just the square root of um, x, y. And then when you multiply through by two, if you put the two right here, you get x squared plus y squared is greater than two x y. So this is, you know, it's kind of nice to see that, right? In other words, we use this high power thing called the mirror head inequality to establish something that's readily obtained in, in, in like a minute, you know? But this, this part is, this is called the geometric mean. I'm sorry, uh, this, this left-hand side here is called the arithmetic mean, AM, okay? And uh, let's see, I lost my pencil here. Okay, so this is the AM, the left-hand side here is AM, and then the right-hand side is GM, and that stands for geometric mean. All righty, and so Muirhead actually proves the special case of the geometric mean. And uh, anyway, I thought that I thought that was pretty cool to actually understand what this sim means. It means to range through all the possible permutations of the variables that you're working with, leaving the exponents unaltered. All right, hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think.